Hello everyone, welcome Rabbi Abe here. We're going to talk about the month of Gemini. And yes, Gemini is the, the month. It is amazing because there's so much light, so much positive energy that we can get if we know how to use it. And I'm going to show you how to do that. First off, just I want to remind everybody, go to RabbiAbe.com if you want to register for the Angels course. Okay, one day, Sunday, June 30th, go to RabbiAbe.com and you'll find out more about that. Okay, Gemini is slowly approaching the new moon of Gemini, and we need to know, what is it that we need to know about the month of Gemini? Well, let's just, you know, go over the basics of Gemini. I'm going to read to you from the book of uh, uh, Formation, the Sefi Yitzirah. Uh This is, uh, you know, close to 4,000 years old. Uh, it you know, many claim that this is the oldest written, written text that uh, explains about uh, the cosmos and astrology, even though other uh, teachings of astrology claim to be even 10,000 years old, Chinese astrology and so on. But uh, I have yet to see anything written, written that's that old, okay? So, at least to my knowledge, and if not, please put it in the comment section. Um, if you know of anything written that's older than 4,000 years old, that explains about the astrology and the cosmos. In any case, Abraham the patriarch explains to us how we can understand not only the month of Gemini cosmically, but how we take charge, how we can take Control of the month of Gemini. But let's take it one step at a time. So he says, Himlich ot resh. The letter resh, which I'm putting up uh, on the screen here. Kashalo kete. He bound to the letter resh a crown. Vitsa bo kochav baolam v'yom shishi bashana v'nachis small benefesh. All right. A number of things were created with the letter resh. We know that according to the Kabbalah, the letters, that is the cosmic letters, not the physical letters, but the physical letters are the manifestation of cosmic letters. That's what they are. So the shapes and the forms of the Hebrew letters are really manifestations of the energy of that letter. And therefore, the physical letter can also get us back to the energetic vibration. And if we connect to those letters through, you know, in a number of ways, through meditation, through prayer, through contemplation, simply contemplating on the letter or on a combination of letters, as we'll be talking about in the Angel Seminar as well, because this can also help us, can get us in touch with specific angels, or can just help us with things like abundance and sustenance and... Um, uh, love, relationships, and so on. So he says in the Book of Formation that this letter Resh formed Mercury, Kochav, Mercury, within the framework of, of the world or the universe. The sixth day, Yom Shishi, the sixth day, that would be Friday for us. And the uh, left nostril. Okay, the left nostril, which is also significant, in in the humankind. Okay, so that's the letter Resh. Mercury, uh, Friday, and the left nostril. Now, when we go uh, to the other letter, uh, the other letter that's significant for us, he also says, or rather, with the same letter, Oh, no, I'm sorry, the letter Zion, which is the other letter, because it's always two letters that give force and energy to the month. The letter Zion creates uh, the attribute of Recha, smell, smell. Now, smell, as we'll understand, uh, and, and that coincides also with Mercury, which is the left nostril, right? The nostril smells, the nose smells. But um, smell is not only a physical smell. You know, it, it relates to perception. 
and therefore, you know, we have expressions like, uh, you know, something smells funny here, you know, or something smells fishy is the, the expression. Now, we don't necessarily mean that something smells like fish. It means something is not right. Something is off. Something doesn't look right, smell right. So our perceptions are often used as, you know, some kind of explanation for environment or perception. Then in this case, it's the nose and the attribute of smell. So that somehow comes from uh, Gemini. And then he talks about, uh, let me get the page in Sefi Hitzira, the letter Resh, the letter Resh, um, which causes the, const the constellation of Toomim. Toomim is the twins, which of course, that is uh, Gemini, okay? And uh, yes, he he explains that to us in the in the book of formation itself. Okay, so what is the significance of that for us? And you know what's interesting over here, uh, and 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 this is such a powerful idea that if you take these two letters, each one with their individual attributes and put them side by side, they actually spell a word. Resh of uh, Mercury and Zion of Gemini, when you put them together, they spell Raz, R-A-Z, Raz. Now, Raz in Hebrew means secret, secret. How does that relate to Gemini? Does that mean that Geminis have secrets? Now, you might know some Geminis who do have secrets. They may not be forthcoming, let's say. They may be keeping secrets, because Geminis can do that, right? Because they have secret in their DNA. But let's understand how that manifests. We might think it's a negative thing, but it's an extremely positive thing. How does it manifest? Now, let's, we need to understand about Gemini a little bit. Because, and if you know anything about a little bit about Gemini's, you'll know Gemini's, we can say the jack of all trades, master of none, which means Gemini's are smart. They tend to be quite smart. They're quick. They're uh, quick studies. In other words, they can learn very, very fast. They have Mercury, which is a planet of communication. And without getting into the details of the Hebrew word for Mercury, Kochav, but it includes within it 26, which is the Tetragrammaton, and 22, which is the 22 letters. And that means it is the, both Virgo and Gemini, especially Gemini, perfect communication. They can communicate things perfectly with the least amount of clutter of, of all the signs of the zodiac. If they're telling the truth. <laughs> okay. Now that, that's a different discussion, but assuming they're telling they're they're being forthcoming then communication can be very clear because they have that communication not only communication in words but spiritual communication so gemini can really communicate spiritually meaning it's easy for gemini to see things which are abstract right beyond the physical like the opposite of Capricorn, difficult to be spiritual. Easy for Gemini to be spiritual. Unfortunately, it's also easy for them to drop, drop this spiritual teaching and go for another one and change because they like change. Why does a Gemini change things in their life? One reason. They get bored. Boredom. Now, why do we get bored of anything? I want you to think about it, because this is very important. Boredom is considered a spiritual flaw. It means a lack. When something is not exciting, I mean, light, energy, positive energy is always very exciting. So when we get bored of something, 
it usually means that I'm not, fe- I'm not feeling the light in that thing. When do we get bored? Well, a number of reasons. I mean, why a Gemini gets bored, why another person will get bored, might be two different reasons. But in general, boredom comes from maybe feeling that I've mastered it. That would be Gemini. You know, I got it. I understand it already. Now I need something more new and more exciting. You know, this relationship, you know, we get into a a rut, a routine. It's boring. And we feel we need a change or a change of relationships or a change of the way we do this relationship or how we do what we do and so on. Because, again, we're trying to spice it up, spice it up, spice up our life, spice up our relationship, spice up our job. Why do we need to spice it up? What do you mean spice? What spice it up? What is it? What does it actually mean to spice it up? Well, really, what it really means, because probably we haven't really given it a lot of deeper thought, to spice up means to find another level of energy. Now, that might mean in something new, or can it be in the same thing? And here is a big key for Gemini. Why? Because, again, This word, Raz, which are the two letters of this month, it means secret. Where is a secret? What is a secret? I mean, think about it for a second. You know, if you tell someone, you know what, I have a secret, but I'm not going to tell you. (laughs) What does it do to that person who you're telling it to? Now they really want to know. What what do you mean you have a secret? Oh, tell me what's the secret. No, 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 I can't tell you what. It's a secret. I can't tell you. So, secret begs to be uncovered. That's what a secret is. A secret begs to be revealed. Why? Because it's concealed. And anything that is concealed tends to be exciting. Why? Because light is concealed. Think about it. I mean, I, I, I'm going to give you a crude example now. Uh, if... You know, I, I, and again, I've only heard this. I mean, if everybody walked around naked, would that be exciting? I mean, you know, it might be for five or ten minutes, but it, the moment you get used to it, what happens? It will likely become boring and not exciting anymore. That's crazy. Why? And I'm not saying that there wouldn't be moments, but because it would go to the level of boredom because no new light, no new energy is being revealed. Why is it more exciting, more energetic to unclothe something? If you're in a relationship, I, I, I again, I don't want to get too personal here, but unclothing can be very exciting. This also happens in foods, by the way. If you happen to like, let's say, I don't know, nuts, or maybe fruits. I know the tradition of some people are to eat, um, you know, uh, these uh, seeds, you know, like sunflower seeds. Some people eat those. A lot of Middle Eastern people like sunflower seeds or pumpkin seeds. Many people do. I don't want to limit. But how how is it if you have just a bag of shelled seeds? Not so exciting. You know what's exciting? You're sitting by the TV and you, you know, I've watched people do this. They're like expert, almost like birds. You know, you you open it up with your teeth and your tongue goes in and pulls out the seed. And this is, and you can eat way more of these seeds if you have to unshell them first in order to eat the seeds. Because you got to do a little bit of work to get through the shell. See, if it's too easy, it's not exciting. So what is the premise of secret? When we have a secret and we say, oh, I'm not going to tell you, it awakens desire. And desire is everything. Secret awakens the desire to get to the secret, which means to get to the light. So when something becomes boring, 
It means I'm not working to go to the next level or the barrier because there's endless within everything. There's endless within a relationship. There's endless levels of understanding. There's endless levels of love. There's endless levels of revealing the newness within something. But when you're when you when you're in a robotic consciousness, when we are not looking to go deeper, deeper with wisdom. I know all this. I know this stuff already. Really? You know, there were sages who would re- re- read and review a study section 400 times the same thing. And every time they will read the same thing, they will go to another level, a new level, a deeper level. There's a story about one sage who he would read that passage 400 times and he couldn't even go beyond the first two words. He would just be rolling on the floor in ecstasy from all the revelation of light and depth because he kept working to go to another level and another level. and a, But it's the same two words. If you follow what I'm saying, this is the secret of secret, the secret of secrets. That's what exists within the month of Gemini for all of us. For all of us, it exists the ability to go beyond any level of anything in our life, whether it's our relationship, whether it's our work or business, it's to go to a new level, to uncover a new secret, a new level of energy that lies beyond the surface, and it's covered right now. But it's up to me to work, to make effort, to do what, to do something. I need to do something in order to reveal it. You know, it's it's not by coincidence that on the sixth of lunar Gemini, uh, it says biblically on the sixth of lunar Gemini that uh, the uh, Moses went to Sinai to re- uh, get the Torah, re- the revelation of the Torah at Mount Sinai. Why is that? What 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 was that about? A bunch of rules and customs or religion? No. This represented an event where there was a total enlightenment that was revealed to all the nations of the world. Not just Jewish people. All the nations of the world were there, were present in every language. It was like, you know, the UN. It was immediate, it's translated according to the ear of the individual and, you know, whatever actually happened over there. But it was the revelation of the totality of that light. Now, that light didn't necessarily stay with people, but there was a complete revelation. Any illness, any sickness was was removed. Uh, you know, there, there was no death for an amount of time. It eventually did come back. But the point is that I'm making here, it's a revelation of light. It's another level of a revelation of light. So this is for all of us. What we need to do this month is go into all the situations that we are taking for granted. If it's a relationship we're taking for granted, that we feel there's some boredom over there. If it's our work, there's a little boredom over there. If it's, if your business is not keeping you on your toes, okay. (laughs) And that's a blessing, by the way, when something is really keeping us on our toes, even a relationship in a good way, that's a blessing. Because we're pushed to work at it to go to new levels. New levels of understanding, new levels of energy, new levels of light, new levels of revelation of energy. But, you know, when it's comfortable, let's say, this is the biggest trap. Because it's very easy to get settled. It's very easy to fall into routine. It's very easy to fall into the boredom. Now, that doesn't mean that there's no new light over there. But what it does mean is I need to work to get at it. I need to go look inside, see what I can do, see I can work with this person, see what I can create new in my work, a new position, or come up with some new ideas, whatever it is, okay, in a relationship. How can we get to the next level of our relationship? How about talk about it? 
with your significant other. Because that's the way, not only you keep it fresh, you keep going to a deeper level. And when you go to a deeper level, the, uh, there's an endless amount of secrets to reveal. And remember the rule. Within the secret, there is light. And since the secret doesn't stay forever, because once it's been revealed, it's no longer a secret. We need to move on to the next level of secrets. But thank God, there's an endless amount of secrets available for us because the light is endless and wants to give us everything always. Remember, angels, June 30th, go to rabbiate.com. And I'll see you very soon. Thank you for watching if you made it to the end. And I'll see you in the next video. All the best. Happy new moon of Gemini.